musicians plus a big screen and you know instead of 200 puppets and a big wooden chest you get the picture it's not as simple just do a puppet show for us um, and so uh, and, I, and I, I faced a kind of similar, similar situation uh, today actually uh, after uh, Roman's wonderful workshop uh, we were asked by uh, the Center for Creative Collaboration uh, whether we would have a puppet show after the, 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 this wonderful workshop, which the center uh, sponsored a, a reception as well for. And I said, well, I don't know if Roman Pasca actually does little puppet shows. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, we've heard today a little bit about the kind of size and scale which he's used to working on these days. I, I, I'd seen a little show he had made back in 1992, Theater for the Birds which in some sense was a little show. It was also about the end of the world. Um, so in another sense, it was, it was a very, very big show. Um, but um, so I thought about what we might offer. And I said, well, OK, I'll, I'll be a little bit self-promotional, perhaps, but also very pragmatic going off to the States. A show which I had done in February, but wanted to, to, uh, to work on again. Um, and, and people in the workshop will notice that I didn't volunteer to perform the last uh, performance. Because um, I want to actually share what I'm doing now with you. Um, this is a performance. Um, you can see I'm not wearing a proper Dalang uniform. And when, when I go to America, I, I can assure you that I will have a nice shirt. But <laughs> in, in, in Java, when one does a rehearsal, one's often dressed like this. And this, these houses and that are pretty hot. So again, it's very pragmatic. Can people see in the back? You might feel very comfortable sitting in front, or, or sitting on the floor, indeed. Yeah, there are a couple of seats over here. Bring your wine with you. One more. 
more here. which I find myself in here and, and often, in fact, that I, I represent myself as a, a dalang, a puppeteer, a storyteller, a narrator, a creative world, a master of shadows, some a friend of mine in California talks about. And, and, and yet, um, there's no wayang, per se, and I can only be a dalang in the context of a wayang. Only in the world of a wayang can I be a dalang. And yet, wayang don't exist really uh, outside of, of Java, just as Roman Pasch had told us that a puppet doesn't exist when it's not moved by a puppeteer. And in order to have a wayang, a Javanese wayang, that is, one has to have a, a Javanese audience. Um, well, we have a few honorary Javanese among us. We don't really have a Javanese audience, per se. And this, this is the issue we find ourselves in this world we live in, is that uh, we have these theater forms which come out of the past, like the Italian Sicilian marionettes, which exist in interaction in particular contexts and environments, and then somehow something happens. Either they get transported to a distant land and they lose that sense of social purchase, or the audience itself dries up and the puppeteers want to continue to perform because we like to perform puppetry. We all have our relations with our puppets. We're very vested in the form. But somehow, the form doesn't exist without that audience. And so here I find myself in a dilemma, a conundrum, a paradox. And it's at moments like this. That these wires, these puppets, certain saliences in it, puppets themselves. Yan Smar Smar Winahang Smar Smar Winahang Tikang Sar Tikang Sarawara Tewa Umaya Katun Katun Ragani Hinkli Smar. Smar, my old friend. Smar Kuda Pawana. This is uh, a shadow puppet out of Java. It's a, it's a real shadow puppet. It's not a fictional shadow puppet. It's, it's used in performances. Smar. I call him my old friend. Smar Kuda Pawana. Ooh! Ana Pamajika. Smar. In English, please. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I could do these sulukan, these old Javanese songs in Javanese, because that's poetry, and people in Java don't understand them anyways. But, <laughs> but in English, because we have a real audience. Oh, I understand, Majikan. Because the Punakawa and the clown servants in Sunda, we speak in Sundanese. <laughs> in Bali, we speak in Balinese. In England, we must speak in English. And in America, 
You can speak in Americanese. Yeah, they speak English in American. <laughs> That's true, even if they don't use the same word for the inside of an avocado. <laughs> same, same language. Oh, I understand that's an in-joke. Yeah, there are a lot of in-jokes today. <laughs> oh, Raji Khan, why have you called me out of the puppet chest? Well, actually, I don't have a puppet chest. In my, I have, I have a, a, actually a bag, a suitcase. This is my suitcase show. You know? <laughs> oh, very well, why is you called me out? Well, I have this, this problem, it's an infinite problem, paradox. Oh, yes, you said you should speak in Japanese. Well, I'm kind of explaining a Japanese concept, which the audience already understood. I, I, yeah, I hope you understood that. <laughs> <laughs> My students said they don't understand even if I put one Japanese word in it. So that's upsetting sometimes. <laughs> oh, Majikan, you go on and on. <laughs> well, I, I do have this problem, Sumar, is that I am kind of stuck in this cosmic dilemma absolute, uh, unbelievable, metaphysical dilemma. I, I feel that I'm a doll. I've got the doll hat. <laughs> Those of you know the Monty Python joke about the lion tamer. Um, but I, 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 I don't actually have a why. Whoa, these kinds of paradoxes, they're nonsense. You're talking just like my son, Chunkring. Chunkring. Uh, Chunkring is a clown servant out of the wine of Chirbun. Uh, for those of you who know wine from other contexts, he's identical more or less with Hekko. It was a, a very funny clown servant with a long nose. I do. Whoa, yes, just like Chunkring. Were you saying that I have a long nose like Chunkring? Whoa, I wasn't implying that at all. <laughs> In profile, perhaps. <laughs> what is it you want? I'd like some solution to this, Samad. And you, my old friend, you're always at my side. You've been with me since I've been a boy. I took you once to Israel when, you, when I did this wine there, one of the very few puppets. It was a very funny wine. We only had two musicians in that wine because all the gamelan kind of dropped out. <laughs> <laughs> it worked nonetheless. We had a very distinguished uh, uh, scholar of Sanskrit who was very appreciative of this story. Oh, you go on and on. <laughs> you want some solution to your problem. Yeah, actually, I do, Samar. I really do want a solution. Oh, if you were my son, Chunkring, I would advise you to go see my younger brother, Butara Guru. I, ha I hadn't thought of that one yet. I do have some other puppets, so you can anticipate the puppets are going to go one by one. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a dramaturgical device, and, and so when I say that I didn't think about that, I actually did think about it. <laughs> this appears to be improvised, but in fact, it's highly scripted. Every line of dialogue here is written out in advance. I think about them. I discuss them with my daughter, who's my primary audience at home. Sometimes I email my friends. I'm on Facebook a lot. You might not know that Facebook in Indonesia is like the, the highest percentage of Facebook users in the world. I know Heli knows that. Second, second highest after America? Yeah. Yeah, actually. second highest after America. But it's catching up soon. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So people who are experts in media and performance know all about this, like Kelly over there. Is it okay if I identify you, by the way? Yeah, I know. Is it all right? Yeah, he knows it's okay if I talk to you, too? You're very visible Pleasure. in your glasses. Smart might think you're also one of the Pinnacle and the Clown oh, Service yes, as please. well. <laughs> so I'm glad you can play that, that role, too. Oh, here you go on with the audience. You have your own dilemma. Very well, then, Smart. I'll go off to Suralaya Kadewatan, the world of the gods, and talk to your younger brother, Patara Guru, the heavenly teacher. So, anyways, when I would be doing a wine like this in Java, there would be a big gamelan orchestra, 15, 20, something, 50 piece band behind me. Of course, I'd have a screen here. I wouldn't be looking directly at you. There'd be a banana log here. Uh, there'd be a lot of music going on. There'd be a very pretty female vocalist, or five or ten, who would be singing and entertaining you as the next scene is being set up that all these things would be happening uh, simultaneously, and uh, uh, there would be uh, uh, beautiful uh, music, there would be, you'd be talking among each other because not everyone's interested in these kinds of moments of the performance. <laughs> and then before you know it, there would be uh, two or more characters at the screen. What is it? What? I'm at your service. Do you know why I have summoned you here today? I am not certain. It is because of the cosmic disturbance which threatens the very structure of the universe. Are you referring to the volcanic eruptions in Java? 
No, I'm not referring to the volcanic eruptions of Java. Are you referring to, perhaps, a tsunami and an earthquake in Japan? <laughs> I'm not referring to that, to that either. Are you referring to the economic crisis in Greece? That was the last while we did. <laughs> <laughs> what are you referring to? There is a human who has come to the world of the gods, and you know that the world of the gods, Suralayaka Dewatan, is the place of the gods alone. Human beings cannot mount to this heavenly plane without causing a great disturbance. And it has come to my attention that a human being has indeed come to this plane of the gods. Where is this crazy man? Where is this person who dares to insult you? I believe he is holding you. Whoa! 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 What are you doing here? Well, you know, I have been holding you for a while. You might not know that. But actually, I've come here because of a cosmic dilemma, which I myself am facing. And I think other puppeteers in the audience possibly are facing as well, particularly punch men, perhaps. Um, the punch women. <laughs> Why have you come here? Well, I am, I am faced with this absolutely impenetrable problem. Yes, we understand. You've gone on of that long enough. You've, you've been overhearing me then. Indeed I have. We gods, we get around. You're at your last performance. <laughs> it's like this. I, I'm a Dalang, and yet I have a relationship to Wayang without an audience, and I just am stuck here. Very well, then, if you have a, a nature of such a philosophical problem, you've come to the wrong people, in fact. <laughs> philosophical problem. But you're the, you're, the, you're the god. Surely you can help me in this. Indeed, but every god, there is indeed a function. My function is as the vizier of the gods. I stand as a messenger, and I act as an intermediary between the world of the gods and the world of those humans out there. Tadaguru, the heavenly teacher, is known as the king of the gods. Ratuning Tribuana, Manik Maya, Ratuning Jaka. He is the king, he is in charge. If you have a question regarding a philosophical question of human nature, then you must turn to Kresna Dewa Kamanusan. Kresna Dewa Kamanusan. Hmm. Tell me, where can I find Kresna Dewa Kamanusan? Well, it just so happens he is visiting us here today. In the interest of brevity and time, I'll call him out. Kresna, God of humanity. Dewa Kamanusan. Dewa means God. Kamanusan means humanity, also means humane, because Kresna is an incarnation of Vishnu, known as Krishna, of course, in India. And he is both there to service mankind and also to act as a model of humanity, of, huma of being humane in this world. And he is a font of wisdom. <laughs> 